Hey, what's going on, y'all? I'm Modi J, and I'm back. This is my big brother, Hen. Hen, say what's up to him. All right, so we got a new series from 50 Cent. Everybody that's been watching me know Power just ended. This is a new season called For Life on ABC about a man named Aaron Wallace who got locked up, been in jail for nine years now. And he taught himself while he's in prison to become a lawyer, and he starts defending cases for it. everybody that's in the jail. You know me, I'm not going to hold you up. We're going to jump right into it. Like I say, it's a new show. If you like my content, please subscribe to the channel, and thank y'all for watching. Let's jump right into it. So the first case Aaron has is for a guy named Jose. I'm assuming they share the same cell together, because, I mean... They were talking to each other in his room, but I don't think so. Yeah, because he did ask him, "What is this all from your case?" He had all the stuff on the walls and everything. Yeah, so for Aaron's his own case, he has all the information on the wall, and it turns out this guy, this DA right here, Mr. O'Malley, is the one that actually arrested Aaron. So right now, Aaron has a little personal vendetta against him because he was wrongfully accused and been in jail. And he's trying to defend a case on a guy named Jose, who was 18 at the time, that had sex with a girl that was, what, 15 or did they say 16? 15. Now, they were together before he was 18, but once he turned 18, the parents didn't like that. So, this is what he's trying to defend him to get out. And you can already tell it's going to be friction between Aaron and Mr. O'Malley. So, that's where we at right now in the court case. And they're basically just, this like the first day in court, they're trying to get things rolling and pretty much build the case to help Jose get out of there. So of course, you know, O'Malley, he's trying the case. So when he comes out, the head guy over the DA, he's telling O'Malley, hey, drop everything you're doing and focus on this case. It will look bad if we get this case beat by a guy that's in prison that you locked up. So pretty much a criminal beating the DA. They don't want that because that's going to look bad. That was a criminal past the bar and all that. O'Malley told him all the ways that he slipped through the crack and all that and got his, his bar. Yeah, he got And pretty much, it, like I said, it's going to look bad. So if the news here, like, let's just say OJ went to, K, uh, went to court and defended somebody and won. You don't want that, especially as a DA, because then it's like, man, all your credibility is gone. It's just going to look bad. So Aaron, he's getting ready for the case and everything, but it's not looking too good. Now we finally get introduced into Aaron's ex-wife, Marie. Marie and um, Aaron, they have a daughter together, Jasmine, and pretty much Aaron is like, uh, hey, where's my daughter at? And then she's like, well, she wasn't coming. And then she has a, what was it? A report card that he had to sign. And then he asked her, he's like, are you okay with these grades? And she was like, eh, I mean, they're grades. Yeah. But he's pretty much like, I need her to do better, you know what I'm saying? And then her boyfriend brought up the boyfriend. Like, is he not doing as bad as a job? And then she's like, well, he's not a father. You are. Yeah, you're a father. And you need to come home. But you're not coming home because you're in here for life. So, allegedly, he had a plea deal where it would only been 20 years. And he would have came home and... uh he had three more before he could. No, because remember she's... Home. Yeah, that was... Uh, yeah, but I'm talking about first. Oh, yeah, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. In three years, he could have. He could have paroled, paroled, yeah. So he would have been out by now if he would have took if he would have took the plea deal. But if he ain't did it, he ain't taking the plea deal. Me and Aaron, we standing strong with this one. Yeah, so he's pretty much fighting this case. Like we said, everything is on the wall for him. And it turns out the boyfriend really ain't helping. He's just at the house. And so he's not doing anything but going to work and coming back. So Aaron feels a type of way about that. We're going to see how that plays out. I'm pretty sure he probably kind of knows the guy. You know what I'm saying? So he probably has like, hey, man, if you're going to be there with my ex-wife, at least help out around the house. So everybody in the prison knows that Aaron has passed the bar and everybody's like, hey, man, we want Aaron to do our case. Because a lot of these people, they can't afford lawyers, at least decent lawyers. So they're like, man, we might as well get somebody that's in here with us. So the Nazis, they come up to him. And they pretty much like, hey, you heard about Joey Knox? They threw him in the hole. We want you to take his case. And Aaron was like, I don't know about that. And they were like, nah. So, like, we 
you got some stuff on you and we know how much time you be spending with the war and you wouldn't want us to start bringing that up yeah so they don't want to bring up anything like that and what Aaron says is and this is interesting too so I, I know this is going to play a factor later on he says the only reason I spend a lot of time in there is because I'm the inmates representatives so for everybody in jail he goes in there to fight for everybody's rights doesn't matter who they are he's fighting for everyone's rights pretty much like living conditions things like that but the Nazis, they're like, hey, man, we need you to take this case for us or we're going to bring stuff up on you. So it kind of puts him in a bind. Like, it's not going to look too good yeah. for you in prison that you spend this much time in the warden's office. Yeah, so pretty much he has to take on a case that he wouldn't really, you know what I'm saying, we really wouldn't do that. And he even asked him, oh, you're not going to do it? We're inmates. What, is it because our tax? So he got like Aryan Nation. You can see his boy has a Nazi sign on it, on his neck. So he's like, Swatsy. yeah, he's like, like, all right, I'll take the case. It ain't gonna be good, but I'll take the case. Now we finally get to meet the warden, Madame Warden. So he goes into the office. She's on the phone with her son, and he's pretty much complaining like how kids do. And she tells Aaron, yeah, it's my son. You know how boys are. And, you know, he just has a daughter from what we know. He just has a daughter. So he said he doesn't know anything about that. He has a daughter. He's not at home with her every night. Yeah, so he wouldn't know how kids act at that age. Pretty much word got around that he was on the yard talking to Wild Bill. So the guy, the, the head of the area nation is Wild Bill. She asked him, is he going to take the case on Johnny Knox? Johnny Knox is in um, solitary confinement. So the warden is trying to push getting rid of solitary at the prison. But she said the only way they can get rid of that, they have to get the prisoners out of the solitary. So you, you need to talk to them, get them to cooperate, and stop riling up. Yeah. And then if we, have, we don't have people in solitary confinement, then we don't need it. Yeah, then we can eliminate the whole thing. My thing is, if she's the warden, just say, hey, get them out of solitary. You know what I'm saying? Hey, but put them back. But then he said the guards are going to revolt. On that. Yeah. The, the, she's, he said the guards will revolt, and she was like... Well, whoever revolts, that's my next move. So she's pretty much, I'm all in on this. I don't care what's going to happen. So then she asked him, how's the drug usage with the inmates and everything? And Aaron, as the, the rep for all the inmates, he says, I'm not telling on any inmates, only the guards. But what I can see, the drugs have went down, but you still have to watch the guards. So she's like, okay, I understand that. And when he gets ready to leave, she stops and says, hold on, hold on, hold on. I heard you got your, um, your trial rescheduled. For uh, Jose, this is his first his first big case that we know about is Jose. So he has that rescheduled, and that's what he's looking forward to doing. So and we're gonna go through with the retrial now for Jose. The trial starts. We get to see Jose. So Jose takes a stand. Aaron he starts it off. He talks about how he was uh, dating this girl named Molly. She was underage, but they met. They were two grades apart while they were in school. Molly came from a real good family. And Jose, as we can see, he he's all tatted up and everything. So. Dad was gone. Mom was working three jobs. And they didn't approve. So Aaron, the first way he starts out his defense is, in these states, he starts naming off states that it's con consent is legal in these, you know what I'm saying, these age brackets. The difference that they were was all right. The judge then says, Although this may be true in those states, in this state, that's not the law. And parental consent is still the only way that this can happen. So then Aaron proceeds to ask him what happened that night. Jose tells him everything that happened. Molly was texting him, talking about her parents don't want her to see him no more. How she needs to see him one last time and then she'll leave him alone. And she can't live without him. So Aaron, I mean not Aaron, Jose pulls up. He goes over there after she was texting him. He said he falls asleep after they had a uh, consensual sex. He wakes up. She's in the living room. Is she? They woke up to a note. He woke up to a note, a suicide note by him. And when he went to the living room, Molly is laying on the ground or on the couch, and she OD. He called the police, but he left. Aaron asked him, "Why did you leave?" He said, "I had to leave because I knew her parents would be coming after." And that's when they show O'Malley, and O'Malley's like, man, maybe this guy's on to something. <laughs> so O'Malley didn't really like that. And then Aaron stated that he's going to call, what, the paramedic and the cop that seen The paramedic, the, the cop, and the drug dealer. Because nobody's seen the suicide note. Yeah, well, it was missing. Yeah. 
it was missing and he said he's gonna call the drug dealer because they tried to say that jose gave molly the oxy and he said he didn't do it so they're gonna call the drugs uh the drug dealer to stand that he bought it for him. yeah that he admit that he bought it for molly we finally get to see the daughter jasmine so jasmine's at the table and she's asking her mom mom when you went to see dad why can't i go see him and the mom's like, nah, we need to keep you separate from the prison life and your regular life. What you got going on here, you need to stay focused and stay on track. Then the mom's boyfriend comes in. So we finally get to meet who the guy is staying at the house. And he's pretty much agreeing with the mom. Like, hey, you don't need to see your dad. Your, like, mom, your mom has a very good reason yeah. to keep you away from your dad. And then she snapped at him like you gonna talk to me about that yeah like you're not you're not helping around the house you just here and he's pretty much like hey man i support you so i think it's best your best interest that you don't go see him just stay away from that you know what i'm saying and you'll be all good so jasmine storms off she goes upstairs and then she dropped the bombshell yeah so this is the plot twist here it turns out the mom's boyfriend is friends with aaron and she's mad about it She's like, you're gonna talk to me like this? And you have dad's best friend sleeping with you? Like, hmm. So that's why, that's why if you remember we told you Aaron was upset that that guy was at the house and not being a man. One, because he knows Aaron. And two, is like, dog, I basically put you on and now you're sleeping with my ex-wife but you ain't helping out like. Yeah, like, I said, if y'all gonna do this thing, then you then gotta do step it. up yeah. and be a man about it. So they... Like I said, that's a big plot twist. I did not expect the boyfriend to be best to be best friends with Aaron. I'm thinking it's just gonna be some regular guy. <laughs> so Aaron ends up talking to the drug dealer on the Jose case. So the drug dealer is actually in jail with them. So Aaron's talking to him. He's like, "Hey man, there's an innocent man that's been doing time because you sold the drugs. We need you to testify and say that you're the one that sold Molly the drugs." Directly to Molly and not to Jose. Yeah. So he's, you know what I'm saying? He's playing tough. Like, I don't know about that. But then he eventually comes too. So on the way to the uh, to the trial, Jose and Aaron, they're on the bus. But it turns out the bus isn't going directly to the courthouse. They need to be there by 9 o'clock. But they have to drop another inmate off. That would take them two hours to get there. Once they show up to court, Aaron is furious now. It's like... Ooh, ooh, he breathing all hard. He comes in with his suit and he's telling the judge, like, hey, I'm sorry about the transport, but um, they took us to the wrong spot. That's why we're late. And then here comes O'Malley, man. He's another guy, like, sacks off for of power. O'Malley's like, oh, well, the police officer that you were going to bring to stand, he can't take the stand today. He only had he only had today. He had to be here at 9 o'clock. He's undercover. So Aaron's like, you got paperwork on that? And then the judge takes O'Malley's side. Oh, I heard from his captain. That's all I need. So he's like, dang, lost that on that one. This is what they do. This is what they do all the time. They, they mess us around. Then he says, all right, well, I'm going to call the drug dealer to the stand. O'Malley has an uh, affidavit saying that the drug dealer is going back to his original statement. That Jose brought the drugs. That Jose brought the drugs, and he didn't have nothing to do with giving it directly to Molly. So now Aaron is screwed on both both of his routes, it's like, it's over with. And now he's just Superman. The judge is like, hey. He's in the wall. This don't look good. Ooh, you better calm down. You better, you, hey, you better calm down. So he just, hey, I'd be mad too because you knew you had your case right there where you wanted it. But things ain't go like he thought it would. Once they get back from the courthouse, Jose and Aaron, they're together and they're pretty much talking. Um, Aaron comes into Jose's room and Jose just got done shooting up. So right now he was sitting in court and he heard all the witnesses are gone. So he's pretty much like, Hey man, I believed in you, man. You told me this was all going to happen. And Aaron's like, Hey man, stay calm. I told you I'm a, I'm gonna do this case for you. It's like a, it seems like it's something between you and the DA. And my yeah. grandma said, you know, is this going to work against me if y'all have, like a little personal beef yeah and he's like nah man look trust me i got you on this um you remember the letter that molly wrote to you the suicide like, letter word for word i'll never forget it word for word so aaron comes up with an idea this guy is real smart he pulls out a cell phone that was up under like in the little metal in the chair he pulls it out he calls his uh ex-wife marie he's like hey 
I need you to do me a favor. You're the only person I can trust. She like to say less. I got you. So here we are. She pulls up. She has a box with some paper. This paper looks just like the paper that Molly wrote her suicide note on to Jose. That was the first letter that he got when he got in there. She had sent him a letter. So they tried to track down the same paper. Yeah. So Marie, she comes. She has a box and a piece of paper. Once they get this piece of paper, they talk to Wild Bill, the leader of the Aryan Nation. they like, hey, we need somebody that can write this uh, this document up for you. We're going to give you exactly what it said. We just need you to write this for us. And that's when his second his second went to Wild Bill. Yeah. And he said Aaron will take uh, what's Knox case. Yeah, he'll take Knox case if so you do this. You scratch our back, we'll scratch yours. Yeah, pretty much. And, hey, they had a system down. They out there writing the note. They got watch outs. Like, hey, you got 30 seconds. Get that done. Get that done. Now we finally get to see Molly. Molly takes a stand, and Aaron, he's, I'm telling you, this guy is good. So Aaron, he goes up to her, and he's like, okay, Molly, uh, I have text messages between you and Jose. He gives her a paper, and he tells her to read it. And when she, with the part that she reads is, Jose, uh, I can't live without you. I need you to come over this one last time. If you come over this one last time, I'll leave you alone after this. This is pretty much showing that Jose didn't just show up on his own. She told him to come over. So now that we got that, he's like, you see, she invited Jose over. Then you remember the letter that we just told you, well, the paper that they just had, and they rewrote Molly's letter. He hands it to Molly. Molly reads it, and it's exactly what she said in her suicide note. Once she reads that, she starts crying, and then O'Malley, the DA, is like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why is there? Why is it that the police officer kept a letter for this long? And it's like, yeah, why did he? <laughs> but but then she it starts to get to her the grief, the guilt, and all that. Yeah, so then she and breaks she's down. At Jose, she breaks down, and then she finally admits that Jose didn't buy the drugs for her. She got the drugs from. The drug dealer that was supposed to testify. Oh, and if Jose would have known, he would have took the He would have took it and stopped her from doing the drug because Jose wasn't that kind of guy. So then they he asked her, so why did you lie back then? And that's when she starts spilling all the beans. And you can tell it's like, okay, yeah, Jose's innocent. She starts saying, my parents made me lie because they didn't like Jose. And I'm from a good family. They didn't want me dealing with Jose. So she had to lie because that's what her parents wanted. Now, me personally, I throw her in jail for lying under oath and the parents, but that's neither here or there. O'Malley, he's looking and he's like, that's case it. is over with now. Like, we know that she was lying. And Aaron, the last thing he says, let it be known that those drugs were not bought by Jose. Mm -hmm. And she lied. So that's what happened to a suicide letter that her parents got rid of it. Yeah, they destroyed the original suicide letter. So it all worked out. And then Jose, he leaves. He goes out in the hallway talking to his grandma. And he says, hey, Aaron, I don't know how I'm ever going to repay you for this, but I'm always in debt to you. Like, Jose needs to go home. Yeah, Jose's going home. Free Jose. <laughs> Jose's free. Like I said, Aaron won the case. Jose got to go home. He gets back to prison. And the, the warden, she's pretty much like, hey, you did a good job on that. I, you know what I'm saying? I really applaud that because they have a little thing going on. And she's like, hey, man, they've been bringing up our relationship. And he's like, man, that ain't got nothing to do with anything. So she's pretty much like, hey, just lay low for four months until after the election. Because pretty much she doesn't want any affair to come out. And she wants she wants it to look good on the prison for what she's trying to do also. The election's coming up and the guy that he was going against was running for office. And if he got into office, he, he would not, do, yeah. he could knock in knock Aaron off the bar and he could get rid of her trying to get rid of solitary confinement so Aaron's like man I can't wait four months you get to go home every night I gotta stay in here I can't be waiting four months for that so then visitation comes around and who finally comes and sees him his daughter Jasmine Jasmine comes and she's like she always wanted to see him and she has some some bad news for him and how does this go she unzips her jacket and she's pregnant and this right here, Aaron, you can tell he's hurt by it. He's like, dang, you're too young for this. I want you to finish school and stuff. And I'm not there. And I'm not there. So she's like, 
I know you're not here. It's a blessing, but you got to come home. So pretty much she's putting that in his head. Like, hey, you got to work hard to get yourself home it's compared to work. Yeah. If you want to be a part of it, you need to be out of here because I'm not going to be bringing the baby and all that. So he's like, hey, I'm going to make that happen. I'm going to come home. I'm going to make sure you guys are straight. I'm going to cook. I'm going to cook. So overall, I think this is a good a good show that's going to be, you know what I'm saying? I wonder if every week is going to be a new case. I would hope so. I mean, like, I didn't watch any trailers, so it was coming out. So all this was a big surprise to me. Yeah. So. I mean, I like I like what they did with it. 50 definitely got another one here. I, I don't know if they could do, like, two seasons out of this. Because, I mean, it would be redundant to see in court cases every so, week. I, but. I haven't read up on the real guy that's based off on. So it's no telling. With battle in the DA and the election yeah. coming up and all that. So, I mean, it's, it's a pretty good show. So, Aaron's pretty much in jail. And he's helping everybody that's in there and having an affair with the warden. Well, I, yeah, I would say an affair because um, she has her girlfriend and stuff. And they, well, I don't know if they're married. It's just saying her girlfriend. I don't even know what's going on with their relationship. But yeah, they haven't really got too in-depth. But he's defending people. This, this is a good show. I'm definitely going to tune into it. If you guys like it, make sure you watch, comment. Hey. Do you think that Aaron would be a good defender? Like, if I got into something, like, in real life, comment below. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching. That was For Life, Episode 1, Season 1. We're going to have this coming. I'm going to have all content. If you like my content, like I always say, please subscribe to the channel. Turn on your, your post notifications so whenever I put up a video, you guys will know. Like I say, follow us on our social media. I'm Modi J. This is my big brother, Henderson. Hey, thank you for watching. Be here next week.